Hi there, this is Alana Terry. I am with Jamie Hampton. This is our very first COVID conversation. So if you haven't met us yet, Jamie and I are the co-hosts of the Praying Christian Women podcast. And with everything going on right now, we just wanted to not take a break from what we're doing with the Praying Christian Women podcast, but we felt like we needed to just address all the things going on for our own sense of well-being for you guys listening and definitely we will plan to incorporate prayer for all of you for our nation and people around the world so welcome yeah how's it going over here with like the best you mean over there with you guys or are yeah. you doing like the general like how's it going world how's it <laughs> the going world, world is on lockdown no, it is I was, <laughs> yeah i mean i i sort of know how you're doing but i guess yeah just I how know. are you doing how are you yeah, guys well, holding up what is it it's march 17th um is it been weird I, it is, is today st patrick's, patrick's day, day? Hey, my son came and gave me a pinch when I was downstairs in my bathroom. I'm like, ow. Like, he doesn't know that it's just supposed to be like a little, like, he actually like grabbed, you know. I'm like, that's, that's not how you pinch your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, we are celebrating by going nowhere and <laughs> doing nothing. I don't want to say doing nothing, but no, that kind true. of feels that way. <laughs> how are you guys, Jamie? We're doing well. We're having some um, construction in our house. This is our continuing post earthquake damage repair. And so we're having our floors finished up now and we're nearing like the light at the end of the tunnel. But our guy that's coming to do the work is, you know, not afraid to be in our house, I guess, and still yeah. working. And so everything's been good. But um, other than that, it's, it's just been kids home. So for Alaska, for those that don't know, because I know everybody's in a different situation right yeah, now. Yeah. Yep. Some people so, are. I don't think anybody's in school right now, but there's different levels of how segregated people are. Right. So we are in Alaska. Um, schools, our schools are technically closed through the end of March, but the way the teachers are talking, they're mm -hmm. kind of gearing up for more than that. I'm under yeah. the impression it's going to be longer. So I've mm. gotten a couple of calls from teachers. My kids are in public school, for those that don't know. And so I've gotten a couple of calls from teachers, which I think is, I, I think our district has done a great job of checking to see uh, if they're asking, do you have internet? Do you have computers? Nice. Do your kids have access for, you know, figuring out what they're <clears throat> going to do for distance learning. Good. And um, but also asking, do you have childcare? Because this is one of the things oh, that, right. you know, we in Praying Christian Women, we had a National Day of Prayer prayer time a few days ago on Sunday. And I came away from it feeling like we covered a lot, but I totally did not. I focused a lot on medical and practical mm -hmm. and physical, mm -hmm. but the economic impact, the jobs that are mm -hmm. being lost, the people with kids out of school that might need to still go to work. This is, right. this is stuff that really needs our prayers and our thoughts too. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I know our, our local district, again, I think all of Alaska schools are closed, but they are, one yeah. thing that they did that's neat, and I don't know if it's the same where you're at, is they're opening up the cafeterias for a few hours a day so that people who kind of rely on the school lunches are still going to be able to show up and get fed. I think that's great. It is. And so they're, yeah, they're doing bagged style lunches. So mm -hmm. they're not allowing them mm -hmm. to stay and eat, but they've got, yeah, that three meals a day that you're able to go and get and they have. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I think ours is just kind of during lunch hours. But yeah, I think they're doing breakfast, lunch and dinner for wow. the, the students that are on yeah. the free lunch. So yeah, that's I think, neat. You know, they say that you can kind of judge a culture by how well they take care of their children. And I do feel like during this time that that is on the forefront of people's minds. It is. And even I just, absolutely appreciate it is. And then asking, do you have child care for mm -hmm. this extended time? I'm thinking, oh, thankfully, they're thinking about that and having for sure, you know, I know that they're working with some other things like you know, other organizations that help during the school mm -hmm, year mm -hmm. to try and place kids where they need to be. So yeah. that's also really a relief. Yeah. Well, praise God for the people who are helping to pitch in with child care also yes. so that the essential workers can continue to do their work. 
I've already gotten a couple of emails or texts from people saying, hey, I'm available to help if your kids need a place to come. Yeah, it's been great. I've really felt like, you know, we're always looking for things to be thankful for within these kinds of things. And one of those has been, I've seen a lot of um, kindness and, yeah. you know, we hear a lot about hoarding and toilet paper and all mm-hmm, of that, but mm-hmm. there's been a lot of kindness too. And I really Absolutely. appreciate that. I, let I me really share, do also. I want to share a story about my neighbor that I just think is so sweet. Um, so I have a neighbor and I've been worried about her and checking mm-hmm. on her because she's in her mid eighties. She has compromised lungs and so, you know, I'm asking, do you need stuff from the store? Right, right. And the, other, the other day she said, well, I don't need anything, but can you swing by? Because I need to give you something. So I went and she has a friend who's 100, who is in an assisted living home, like several miles away. And she had been talking to that person, asking uh-huh. her um, if she was okay. And she said, I'm okay. And she's like... I sure wish though. She's like, if I I just want a piece of toast, like, you know, nobody's able to go. And so my, my neighbor, the 80 something neighbor Mm -hmm. bought a toaster and a loaf of bread and a jar of big jar of jam and asked if I could deliver it to this assisted living facility. Now they didn't let me in the door, but they they took the bag of stuff and they set up the toaster for her. And that's awesome. Yeah. Here's this person that could be huddled in fear, worrying about mm-hmm. herself, and she's thinking of others. I love that. That's neat. Well, you know, and for the 100-year-old, that means she was a teenager during the Great Depression, you know, or pretty close to a teen- teenager. I, I just, I find it so interesting because you and I are still, you know, I don't even consider myself middle-aged yet, but... I might you know, be. So, <laughs> and now I don't think so. You know, not if you're going to live to 110. That's right. All right. So, I'll take that. You know, I, I, I do feel like I was even talking to the kids. My husband is going to work, but comes home for lunch now and is kind of on reduced hours. Um, but anyway, we were talking, he was home at lunch and the, we were all just hanging out in the living room talking. And I was telling the kids, cause I had heard about this thing where they're having students sort of write essays about this experience and they're going to save them, you know, as historical first person documents. Wow. And I was talking to the kids like, you know, this is probably going to be the thing that your grandkids ask you about, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe it's not going to be, maybe it's going to blow over and it's going to be kind of like a Y2K, you know, how everybody was worried and then everything was fine, but maybe it's not. And I feel like people who have lived through these things before have such an interesting and unique perspective. I was talking to a Facebook friend and her husband lived through the fall of the Soviet Union and is seeing some parallels. And I don't say that to make people freak out, but almost the opposite, like people have lived through hard times like these before. And it always does feel like it's not quite the end of the world, but almost to that degree of seriousness. And I think sometimes having a historical perspective, like someone in their hundreds would, <laughs> you know, so what she lived through, she lived through the depression, through World War One or World War II. Um, what else, you know, through the, the whole Cold War and all of that. Um, I just think that, yeah, people... Who, who have that life experience behind them probably have a lot of insight and wisdom. I think so too. Someone I've heard several times I've seen posted, um, there's a quote from C.S. Lewis and it was in like the, the dawn of the hydrogen bomb, I guess. You know, how do we live in an atomic bomb age mm-hmm, kind of? Mm-hmm. And um, And he kind of says, well, we'll do it the same as people lived when there was, you know, the plague and when people had -hmm. to deal with, um, man, there were several others and he said Mm -hmm. it way more eloquently than I did, but just basically, you know, these things happen, but there is a before and after for all of this stuff, you know? And Mm -hmm. so I think for this, there'll probably be a before and after and the after Mm -hmm. isn't probably isn't going to be just we never hear about it again. I mean, I think the extent to which life has changed for us has changed something fundamentally, you know, Yeah. but that's not to say that it won't be like, you know, I'm, I mean, there've been other 
epidemics and pandemics yeah. and and what an amazing time where we do have the medical research that we do i know that the the fear is hospital shortages and yeah. not enough ventilators but how amazing is it that we have those things to begin with you know so sometimes just putting it into that kind of perspective was really nice and i'm i feel like one of the neatest times about living right now in this exact minute is my family's healthy. We've got food. My husband's job is looking pretty secure because he's considered an essential worker. And yes, it's scary. And yes, it's stressful. But I'm learning to appreciate things so much more, you know, so that every day when I wake up and don't have a sore throat or a fever, like I'm, I'm so much or I'm so constantly just thinking about those things. So in a way, that's good. I mean, we, we really should all be striving to live that way, whether we're in a pandemic or not, just appreciating these everyday things. And for those of you listening who are kind of, um, who are scared, I don't think there's a single person in the world who's not scared right now, but it's so um, beneficial to just take time to think about the things that you can be thankful for right now. Because there's so much uncertainty and there's so much that's absolutely out of our hands. But we can choose to be grateful and that makes such a huge difference. Yeah. My husband and I were talking last night about just how different this would look if this particular illness was targeting children. Because a oh, lot it would of be times terrifying. I know. And not to minimize our elderly and absolutely. our immunocompromised mm -hmm. people out mm -hmm. there and some, mm -hmm. you know, immunocompromised children. We don't want right. to in any way minimize those losses. Absolutely. But if we had this whole other spectrum of people, mm -hmm. it would just it would it would really heighten the fear and the panic, I think. I it think would. That, that to be able to be thankful that okay for the most part, as far as I know, at this moment, there have not been any child, like children tend to be really not, not having as bad symptoms and definitely no deaths among yeah. children that and, I know of. Right. And like you said, that does not diminish the seriousness of no, this. No, it in, does not. At all. But it's one of those things you can look at. Okay. If we're going through a pandemic, praise God, it's not impacting the kids. Yeah. Um, you know, that's not to say that it's not scary in a lot of other ways, but it's just one of those examples of finding the things that you can be thankful for right now. Like, I'm so thankful that this is coming where we're moving on towards spring. This would feel so much scarier if winter was coming instead of mm -hmm. ending, you know, especially I, up here in Alaska. Yes, I agree. I was just thinking that and thinking, you know, going outside, I mean, not that we're going to have more, we're not going to have more really cold days before we get real spring, but it's kind of this, you know, there's light, which is yeah, good. You can go outside in the sunshine. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I had to take my son to a doctor appointment yesterday. So we, we basically, the kids and I are choosing to just totally um, distance ourselves, but my son's recovering from having his tonsils out and he did have his post-op. So we went to that and I kept him totally bundled. So we walked in, he's wearing gloves because I figure I don't want him touching things. So just winter gloves. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a face mask, but I just wrapped um, a scarf around his face. And so, you know, we went in and then we came home and I took our coats and just laid them out on the porch in the sun, in the cold. I have no idea scientifically if that did anything to kill the virus, but it was kind of a nice, um, a nice feeling. I think that, yeah. you know, right now, the things that you kind of can control, I think is, it's helpful. You know, I'm not super into cleaning, but there's something that feels good about, you know, taking those disinfectant wipes and scrubbing down the sinks. You know, it feels like just small things that you can do. Maybe it's not going to make a big difference, but at least it feels like you're doing something. Well, something, so my cousin is a nurse. I have two cousins that are nurses. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my cousins posted on Facebook um, something about neighbors don't look when your medical worker is stripping down before they go inside with their families. No. Yeah, I, you don't want to bring that in. I think that's a thing. Like, and, you know, she kind of yeah. joked, well, you know, uh, underwear covers just as much as a bathing suit. Ha ha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if that's totally a thing, but I think, yeah, definitely getting rid of those clothing. One interesting thing, when I was in Kenya, um, the water has to be treated. Usually they would treat it with bleach. 
Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of bleach or boil it or what mm -hmm, bleach for right. dishes, I guess, and boil it. Okay. For it. But there was a thing where you could get a clear glass container and put the water in it and keep it outside for, I think, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And that was enough. Sun actually is an anti, anti, what, what do you call it? Antiseptic? I don't know. Antiviral, oh, okay. antibacterial, anti yeah. sun, sunlight sterilizes things. And so not only that, but, and I'm not giving medical advice here or saying that you can like sterilize things like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying throwing stuff yeah. outside might not be a bad idea. And I had another friend that shared something on Facebook about the benefits of taking patients and treating them outside in the open air and how that has been actually shown to be a positive thing that patients recovering or being triaged or, or treated in the open air has actually been um, somehow better now. Beneficial. Again, That's interesting. You know what, let me, a, yeah, I need to run real quick. My, it's time for my son's pain meds. So let's pause super fast and I'll be right, right back. Pausing. Hey there, I'm back. So I'm going to sign off. This is a mom duty, which I know all of you with Kids Home Now understand. So thanks for joining us, guys. We just want to kind of keep, um, keep, what am, what am I trying to say? What do we want to keep, Jamie? We want to keep you encouraged. Keep you encouraged. Also, keep you connected. Sense of community. Connected yeah. is a good one. Yeah. So we want to yeah. stay connected to you guys. Go ahead and keep tuning in and, um, I don't know that we've decided for sure like how often we're going to jump on and do these recordings, but I know it's, it's going to be important for us all to just kind of pull together right now. So I'm going to run. Uh, Jamie, do, would you mind closing in prayer? And we'll talk no. to you guys soon. All right. Absolutely bye. not. I'm, I'm not going to pray. It's just not oh, going to Oh, okay. Happen. All right. Well, there we go. Bye, guys. <laughs> just kidding. I'm going to pray. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, we just want to Th these conversations aren't intended to be instructional. It's just, just to get together and stay connected with you guys. And, um, but we definitely want to end with prayer each day that we do this because it's so important. And we just want to encourage you that if there's one thing you can do while you're holed up in quarantine or isolated from the world, you can pray and your prayers are powerful and don't ignore the callings that God is placing on your life. So Let's say you're reading through the news headlines and something jumps out at you. Instead of worrying about it or kind of, you know, just thinking, oh, there's nothing I can do about this, just take it to God right then and there and, and pray about it for one minute. Just one minute is all it takes. And um, the other thing, though, is don't be overwhelmed with, with your prayers because there is so much out there. This information is just coming at us at, at light speed. and so definitely um, don't be overwhelmed and think that you have to pray for every single thing. Um, just spend time with God and just get quiet with him and say, where, where do you want me praying right now? And bring to mind practical things I can do for people to be a light, but, but keep it simple and don't be afraid to pare down your list if it's getting overwhelming. The other thing is don't be afraid to unplug, you know, from social media, from the headlines. If something really, really important is going to happen, you're going to find out about it. So, you know, maybe check once a day. I find myself getting a little obsessive about checking the news. Like, I don't even know how often, like every time I think about it, I'll just check and see, did I miss something? Were there more confirmed cases in our state? So that's kind of unhealthy. So I, I'm going to set some boundaries for myself to check like once in the morning, maybe once in the afternoon. And that way it's not quite so all consuming. So maybe that's a prayer tip. Prayer tip one, take your fears or your anxieties or, or your um, things that, that spark your attention as you're going through the news, turn those into prayers. Uh, two, don't be overwhelmed. Don't feel like you've got to pray for everything get quiet with God and just really ask, what are the things that are most important for me to pray for? Maybe just one thing each day for one minute. If, if things are getting a little bit too heavy. Um, uh, and the third thing is just don't underestimate the power of prayer because we can feel helpless being alone and being isolated. 
but we can pray. So don't underestimate the power of doing that. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, you can go join our Praying Christian Women community, which is a private group on Facebook. And every Tuesday, we have a Take 10 Tuesday time where we go and pray. Um, and so that that's a great time to just get together and and pray for 10 or 15, or sometimes I go over and it's more like 20 minutes. But um, but yeah, that's a great time to get together and pray together because our prayers are powerful. And, and it's exciting that God has given us the gift of the internet to be able to connect with each other like this. So I'm so glad that you all joined us. And um, let's just end with just kind of a general prayer. We might, as we get going with these, we might have themes every day that we pray for or get a little fancy. But right now, we're just going to end with just a very general word of prayer. God, we just thank you for the technology to meet up like this, to break out of our isolation, to be encouraged, to encourage each other, and to just take the time to pray. Father, we lift up this whole situation to you, God, this whole coronavirus pandemic. Um, God, we know that you are at work in this because you promise that in all things that you are at work for the good of those who love you, who are called according to your purpose. God, we acknowledge you as more powerful than coronavirus, and we acknowledge that you are powerful enough to bring glory to yourself, to take this weapon formed against us and reclaim it, to refashion it as a weapon against the enemy, as a weapon to further the kingdom of God. We know that you can do that, and we pray that you would give us eyes to see the ways that you can do that, eyes to see the things that we can be doing as, as daughters of the King to bring glory to you and to bring light to this hurting and dark world. God, I just lift up each and every person that is here today. I, I pray against anxiety and fear in the name of Jesus. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Father, be that rock that we stand on. Let us spend more time in the word than we do on the news. Be that rock that we can stand on, that we can remember who you are, that you are a strong tower. You are our refuge. You are our help in times of trouble. You lift us up out of that muck and that mire, and you set us on firm footing. God, for those of us that are drowning in that muck and mire of doubt and worry and fear and anxiety, I just pray that your powerful hands would lift us up and set our feet firmly on the rock. The rock of truth, the rock of your word, the rock of you, almighty God, Jehovah Jireh, almighty God who provides. Lord, I just pray that your provision would go out for every person listening, Lord, that you would provide physical and, and practical needs that you would provide financial needs for those that are having problems. God, I know there are those listening who have lost jobs or have been laid off or have been told that their, their jobs are on hold for an indefinite amount of time. Father, provide in abundance. I just pray that you would relieve the worry right now that, that these women would be hearing this word and would be reminded of your goodness and your power and that you would display your power in mighty ways through their finances and through your provision. I pray that you would surround them with people that will lift them up where they need it most. I pray for those that don't have child care for their kids who are at home and that you would provide immediately for their needs. God, we just ask that you would be just permeating this world with your Holy Spirit. I just pray that as a nation of believers, as a world of believers, for those that, that aren't in the U.S., God, for this entire world, that we would be that salt and that light in a world that desperately needs it. God, direct our prayers, direct our actions, direct our thoughts, words, and be glorified in us in this time. In Jesus' powerful name, amen.